So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you two ways to do a spiritual bath. The first tutorial is going to show you how to make a basic regular spiritual bath with just three ingredients. And then I'm going to be showing you some optional fun items to add that will really help to set your intentions on what you're doing and what you want to release during this spiritual bath. If you want to know more about spiritual baths, I have a separate video where I go more in depth and I talk about my experience doing it and why you should do it. So what I start off with is just plain, pure, unscented Epsom salt. Now you can get the kind that comes with scents. I don't really like those because I don't know if they're using fragrance oils or real essential oils. I don't know. And I like to get a really large bag from Marshalls. Next, you're going to need some type of salt. So Himalayan pink salt and sea salt is what I recommend. You can use the coarse kind. I really love the way it looks. Or you can use the fine salt. And then your third ingredient is going to be Florida water. Now you can buy it, the famous original Florida water that we all know. Or you can also make your own. I plan on doing that. And then depending on how it works, I'll do a tutorial for you all. And I also like to use candles as well. I'll talk more about it. So when you first start off, it's really important that you not only physically cleanse your space, but also spiritually and energetically cleanse your space. Now you can do this with a number of items. You can use sage, white sage, or just plain culinary sage, cedar, sweet grass, as well as Palo Santo. Some people like to burn incense. You can do whatever it is that you like to do to cleanse your space energetically. And you can also use sound as a way to cleanse your space as well. I like to use my Tibetan singing bowl. Um, you can chant to cleanse your space. And before you start to do this, just make sure that you are in a calm, relaxed state, a meditative state. You can either meditate prior to creating your spiritual bath or prior to actually doing your spiritual bath. You can do a journaling exercise. So just sitting down and writing down the things and the emotions and the traumas that you want to release, that you want to let go of. And just be in the mindset of, okay, this is what my intentions are going into this. And I think that's what's like the biggest thing is, yes, you can have the materials to do it. And yes, you can just, you know, throw it all together and get in the bath and call it a day. But really put your energy and your intentions into letting these things go. Because sometimes we attract certain situations in our life that we see as traumatic and we didn't plan for it. And we don't know where it came from. We don't know why it happened to us. And it's important that when we're wanting to release it, we know exactly why we want to release it. We know exactly what it's making us feel. And you might not even know there might be subconscious things that you are unaware of. And what you're doing is you're doing this bath to help you to become more consciously aware of what's going on in your life, what's blocking you, what's stopping you, so that you can really identify it and let it go. You all have the control of healing yourself and letting things go in your life. Okay, let's get back into the tutorial. So I like to prepare everything before I do my spiritual bath. So once I'm in the bath, I can just start doing it. I don't have to pull out bags and all this extra stuff and move stuff out the way. I like to have everything in their own jars and containers to just make it more seamless so I can really be, like I said, in that meditative state. Now, as far as measurements, this is the only part where I'm going to tell you actually have to measure is use two cups of Epsom salt. That's the recommended amount for a bath. And then as far as the actual amount of salt that you can use, I like to use about um, one fourth to, to a half a cup. You can even go up to a whole cup of salt. I don't really think there's an exact measurement for the salt. But definitely for the Epsom salt, you definitely need to make sure you use at least two cups. And you all, this bath needs to go on for um, a minimum of 15 minutes. You don't have to go too long or after that, but a minimum of 15 minutes is going to help to relax your muscles and to ease the tension in your actual physical body that will aid in releasing anything that you want to let go of spiritually, energetically, as well as physically. So I, like I said, I like to put everything in like a nice little jar just to really make this like feel like, okay, I'm doing this. And I actually have specific items that I use just for my spiritual bath. So to me, it's good to have some type of 
you know, ritual items that you like to use just for your bath because they're sacred items that you're putting your energy, your intention into. And it just shows your your subconscious mind as well as your conscious mind that, okay, we're about to cleanse, we're about to let go. You can just stop right here with your salt and Epsom salt blend as well as your Florida water. I like to do just a few drops in the water. But no matter what you do, make sure that you set your intentions into your spiritual bath. And I just like to use my hands. Your hands are very powerful, very sacred parts of your body. So you can pray over it. You can say a mantra. You can say some type of affirmation, whatever you want over your item. So here are some things you can add. Essential oils. I like to use 100% pure essential oils. You can look up what all these different essential oils do, what they help with. Do they help with grounding? Do they help with protection? But just keep in mind, there's some essential oils that cannot go in water. So like cinnamon, it's a great item to use, but cinnamon is really, really irritating to your skin. So just keep that in mind. Herbs. So I like, I actually have all these herbs from my garden with the exception of about two of them. And I love using herbs in my spiritual baths, especially if you grow them yourself. So I have some lemongrass, some lavender leaves, this is some sage that a lovely herbalist here in St. Louis. Um, I actually have a video with her. You all can go check that out. She gave me some sage out of her garden. I have rosemary. Rosemary is great for protection. And I'll have what the different herbs do for you all. I have that up on the screen as well. So you can use oils, you can use intention oils. This is made by a beautiful practitioner. Her name, her company is I Create Life. I did a few videos with her as well. Go check out her website. I have everything linked down below. So I, like I said, I like to put my items into some type of special sacred vessel. So I'm just using this little martini glass. I'm adding my lavender. And as you can see, I'm rubbing it in my hand to kind of activate the oils that are left in the herb. And it really brings out the smell and the power of those herbs as well. But just follow your intuition. If you have items on hand, use what you have on hand. I even um, went to the store and you can go in the, the produce section and you can get these herbs for under $2. Let them dry out and then add that to your spiritual bath. You can even add them in fresh. But when they're dry, they, they're stronger than when they're fresh. And again, I like to set my intentions on my ingredients that I'm adding. It's kind of like when you're cooking food, you know how you'll like salt your pasta water, you'll salt your vegetables, you'll salt your protein, and then you bring everything together. You're adding seasoning and flavor to every layer of whatever you're cooking, and then you bring it all together. That's the same thing with this spiritual bath. Every item that you start to introduce into your spiritual bath, whether it be oils or herbs or whatever, Add your intentions. Again, keep adding your intentions of what you want to release, what you want to do with the spiritual bath, just to, con to continue to build up the energy into every single ingredient. I actually like to do my spiritual baths in a dark bathroom, and I might just have the light from the candles. That's it. So I like to use white candles because I do my spiritual baths on a full moon, and the full moon is white and to me using white candles is just a representation of the full moon illuminating all of the baggage that i have all the things that i need to bring to the surface and it, it really is like a symbol of me releasing these things um, and bringing light to it and becoming more conscious because sometimes we're not consciously aware of what's blocking us from really ascending spiritually emotionally and even physically and also, you can definitely anoint the candles. Um, you can use a release oil, like I said. You can make your own intention oils and anoint the candles. All right, so this is the part I really like. I just get a large bowl. I actually only use this bowl for um, spiritual purposes. And I just put all my ingredients in one bowl.
and I just start mixing everything together. Just keep in mind, if you are using intention oils and they have a carrier oil like olive oil, sunflower oil, whatever they have, just keep in mind that you don't use too much because too much oil in your shower or in your bath, you all know, when that oil hits that water, like it's not going to mix, it's going to be stuck on your body, it's going to be a hot, dusty mess. So, well, hot, oily mess, I should say. So don't use too much of those carrier oils. And as far as your essential oils, make sure you just use a few drops. You don't need a whole lot. And once again, look up these oils and make sure that they're safe to use on your skin because some are very irritating to the skin. Now, here we are. I'm going to be using my hands once again as I'm massaging and working the ingredients together and mixing them together. I'm smelling everything and I'm just allowing myself to be taken over by what my intentions are, which is to release, to let go so I can move forward, so I can grow so I can do what I came here to do. The work that I came here to do can be done. And as you can see, my little one, my little Scorpio, she had to add in some of her little, her little magic. And so you all, with this spiritual bath, like I said, use what you have on hand. R remember that you have the power to heal yourselves. We can all heal ourselves. Of course, these materials, they help us. They really bring awareness to what it is that we need to work on but you are the true key to this your intentions is really what's the most powerful thing of course we were giving these herbs these plants these crystals all of this stuff to aid us but you are the key honey you are the one that activates all of it so just keep that in mind when you're doing this and know that you have the power and the control to to build the life that you want. And in order to build the life that you want, you have to let go of the things that no longer serve you. And it's okay. Whatever you went through, whatever trauma you went through, even if you don't know what it is, you've learned from it and you can let it go. It no longer has to have hold over your life. It no longer has any space within your life. Know that, believe that, and hold on to that belief and understanding as you're doing you know, preparations for your spiritual bath as you're in your spiritual bath, the days and weeks that after your spiritual bath, know that you have control, you all. Okay, back to the tutorial. I'll keep stopping and talking. <laughs> so as far as the Florida water, I like to add mine to the water itself once I do my spiritual bath. I don't like to add it to the ingredients, but it's completely up to you how you want to do it. Something I forgot to say is that you all can just take the herbs themselves and put them a little in a little sachet bag little like what do you call it those little sheer mesh bags you can put them in those and then add that to your hot water when you're doing your bath and let it basically steep within the bath and that way you don't have a whole bunch of herbs just floating all over your tub and then you can add your salt and your epsom salt mixture to the tub some people ask how do i do a spiritual shower what you can do is have it in this bowl just like this and then once you get in the shower allow the shower water to fill up in the bowl and then pour that over your body over your hair all over your body take a minute put it down and then take some of the salt and the epsom epsom salt and the herbs out of the bowl and as it's dissolving it's going to dissolve dissolve all over your body you can rub it into your body rub it into um different parts of your body that might be having pain that you feel like you have a lot of trauma in these certain parts of your body just rub that mixture all over your body and then fill that bowl up again with more water and pour it all over you and that's one way you can do a spiritual bath i'm sure there's other ways but that's that's how i've done it myself personally so right now i'm just filling up that mesh bag with our spiritual bath contents Usually I would just throw everything in my tub and have this hot mess after I take my bath. And after you take your bath, you don't feel like cleaning or anything. So I like to, I'm gonna try to do this method so it's way less mess after I take my bath. I can just jump in the bed and relax. If you don't have any bags like this, you can also use like, if you have like a really thin scarf, you can put everything in that scarf and then tie it up in a knot really well. You can also use cheesecloth as well. Then once you have everything in the mesh bag, what I like to do is let it charge outside underneath the full moon. And that full, the energy from that full moon, because above, as above, so below, 
the energy of purging, of letting go, of releasing is going to be embedded within your own spiritual bath mixture. And then that next day is when I'll do my spiritual bath. Something else you can do when you're in the shower is let the bag get wet. Let it get submerged with water. It's going to start dissolving. You can then take the bag and rub it against your whole body, kind of like it, as if it's like a spiritual bath, like towel or something. And you just rub it against your whole body and just keep letting it get wet. It's going to start dissolving. And this way you just rub up your body. And this way you don't have any mess too when you're in the shower. And you can also do this while you're in the bath too. Keep everything in the bag. Let it get, you know, submerged in the water. And just as you're in the tub, take it out. Rub it all over your body. Rub it over your throat chakra. Rub it over your heart chakra. Rub it over your underarms. Because our underarms actually do hold a lot of, like, um, holds a lot of, like, tension and energy. And a lot of toxins are in our underarms. So that's all that you have to do. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it wasn't too all over the place. I really love and appreciate you all for supporting my channel, supporting what I'm doing. Make sure you like, you comment, and you subscribe. If you feel called to, go check out my website. I do sell crystals. And I'm going to be doing a whole separate video talking about crystals that you can use during your spiritual bath. So stay tuned for that. Just keep in mind that there are some crystals that cannot get wet. So if you want to use crystals in your spiritual bath, look up what crystals can get wet. I love you all. Thank you so, so much for watching. Remember, in all that you do, stay forever true. Peace.